If you use Notion the right way, you probably have a ton of databases. And that means you need some way to make sense of all that data. Now, Notion charts definitely help with visualizing that information. But sometimes you do need a pivot table. Unfortunately, Notion currently doesn't have a slash pivot table command. So what to do? Wait until Notion releases that feature? Well, if you watch this channel, then you know that here we don't wait for Notion updates. We build these features ourselves. So in this video, I'm going to share with you not one, but three different ways of how you can get a pivot table functionality in Notion. We'll start with the most specific method and work our way up to the most scalable method. Ready? Then let's build a pivot table in Notion. Method one, creating an aggregation database. Now this method is certainly the least scalable. So you need to be careful about where you apply it. But if it's a situation where it works well, then it's a great starting way to add a pivot table functionality to Notion. The idea behind this is that we will create a second database and we will use this database as an analytics database to calculate whatever pivot information we care about. So let's take this example. We have uh, sales for my fictional company that sells Notion Mux. I think it's a great business idea at some point I have to start it. And we have a purchase price and we have a buyer's country. And I would like to know now, okay, uh, how much do I actually sell in if individual countries and um, what is the, you know, the revenue per country, right? A typical example where you would use uh, a pivot table. Now, what we can do in this case, since we have a limited number of countries that I sell to, is uh, use this method. So let's go ahead and create a new database. And this database, let's call it pivot table uh, in Notion. And then we can uh, delete uh, this property. Now, uh, what we want to do for the general setup step first is we need a relation between this database and this one. So um, let me just go ahead and create a relation and we'll pick our sales table. I'm going to show them both sides. Next, actually, let's call this, you know, items and then add the um, relation. Perfect. Now, the next step that we need to do is we need to uh, manually set up the individual countries um, for our pivot table. And here you see why this is also not the most scalable method and you need to pick the situation where it works. Because of course, if you have like hundreds uh, or even thousands of entries that you would, you know, have in the uh, columns in your pivot table, then this would take forever. But here, since we have a limited number of countries that we sell to, it's perfect. So let's go ahead and have our USA. We have Germany, we have Italy, we have um, uh, Japan, uh, Australia, and India. That's all the countries that we sell to. Oh, and uh, Canada uh, and uh, yeah, UK, actually. All right, perfect. So um, the next step is that we need to make sure that every single entry in our main database is connected to all entries um, here. Uh, and uh, we can do that through a few ways. Now, of course, the first one, uh, if we have already, you know, our data in here and we have our limited uh, information here, we can just select all the entries in our uh, database, although you would need to make sure that it actually loads everything, right, if you have a very big one, and then just, uh, you know, edit everything at once. And we can do so either through here or right-click, edit property, pivot table and notion, and then just, um, in this case, select uh, all of these entries. Again, uh, for the initial setup, it's not the most scalable. But this part we can automate so you don't have to do this in the future. Let's just wrap this quickly. Uh, the way you would uh, go ahead and hide this, uh, uh, do this automatically, is either through a database template or through a database automation. And I would recommend the database automation if you have access to them. And the uh, way it works is super easy. We go in here and we say, okay, let's set up a new automation. Um, set a pivot table. And what we want to do is whenever we add a page to our sales database, we want to make sure that we um, added the pivot table and we want to make sure that we um, uh, add all the individual entries uh, from here to it. And that means if we now uh, add another entry here, uh, it will automatically be connected uh, to all of them and work probably. We forgot the UK, so let's just delete that one for now. That's method one. If you don't have access to uh, database automations, you can do the same by creating a database template for a new sale entry, right? A uh, new sale. And then here, make sure that every single uh, of these is selected for it and then make this your default template. Then we'll all also automatically create these relations whenever you create an entry here. With this setup done, we can now actually add the uh, pivot functionality. So let's hide quickly the items here and think about what are the things that we wanna see. Uh, we said we want to have the number of sales per country and the total revenue per country. So now to do this, we're going to go here and create a formula property and let's call this uh, total sales. And then in our formula, what do we wanna do? is we want to go into the uh, items connection and then we want to filter that. And we want to filter it for every entry that has as the country the entry here. 
So what we're going to do is say current and then uh, bias country equals and then the name of our um, database. And uh, if we just click OK, what we'll see is that it will fill out a lot of values, right? These are the filtered down values. And for that, important, and this needs to match exactly, right? So if you don't have exact matches, you probably need to do some other uh, uh, data transformation magic in your formula. But assuming it's identical, we can then go in here. Uh, and once we have that, just add dot length to this. And now we have the number of sales per country. We see, OK, USA, 11 sales, tw um, 12 sales to Germany, 7 to Canada, and then the other ones trailing uh, a bit further behind. So much for total sales. And we can then just repeat this formula for whatever information it is that we want, right? Let's do a second example. Uh, let's do um, yeah, total uh, revenue and then uh, go in here and say, okay, this time I want um, the for total revenue. We again need the items. We then need to again uh, filter and say, okay, the current um, bias country should be equal to the name of my pivot thing. And then that uh, selection, I need to get from it the um, purchase price. And then after that, just close it off with uh, sum. Now, if this is a bit complicated in terms of formulas, don't worry, I have a blog post link in the description where you can copy all these formulas. I also have my ultimate formula guide. Uh, if you get used to writing them once, uh, you'll be a master in no time. Uh, so let's just click on OK and we see there's actually a small bug here with Notion. Don't know exactly where that's coming from, where they, you know, add this like uh, after a lot of uh, zeros, uh, the one here. But we can fix that easily by just, you know, having it uh, round for now. Uh, until they fix that issue. And then we have our total revenue. We can, of course, uh, also format it nicely. So say edit property, please. Uh, this is a number format as a US dollar. And then we have, okay, how much we ship into uh, every single country. And you see with this approach of using a filter that filters for whatever it is here uh, that is the equivalent of our uh, first entry. And then the other formulas to bring, you know, the total sum of something in there. We can repli uh, replicate this pivot table functionality in Notion if we have a limited number of things that we want to run the analytics for. Just one last addition for this method. Uh, in a pivot table, you have different ways of aggregating information, right? You can either count uh, or sum, but you have, of course, also things like the average. And since we have access to just formula operators in Notion, we can have that here as well. We just need to slightly modify our formula. So if we want to see the, you know, the average order value here, uh, what we can simply do, you know, average order value, uh, modify our formula slightly and say, okay, uh, instead of the sum, uh, what we want to have here is the, um, oops, uh, the, the mean, right? Uh, or the median, depending on which one we want. So let's say we want uh, the mean of everything uh, and then just click on okay. And now we see, okay, this is our average order value. Method two, hacking charts for visual pivot tables. If that first method was a bit complicated with the formulas, then you're going to love this one because this is super, super simple. All we need to do is uh, go here and create uh, a linked database for our main database. So in this case, sales. And we say link view of database. We're going to pick sales. And then we want to pick a new view type. And we want to pick a chart. Because we're going to well, hack a Notion's new chart functionality for a graphic pivot table, which isn't exactly the same, but it can be used in a similar way. So let's edit this chart. And let's first uh, get our uh, horizontal bar chart because that's just usually, you know, how our pivot tables look like. And we see by default, it actually already picked the values that we want, but we'll go through them in detail. So let's move myself out of the way. Um, what we want to make sure of is that on the main axis, on the Y one, we want to show whatever, you know, we want to create our pivot table by. So in this case, the bias country. And you see already the advantage of this method is we also don't have to manually input this, right? So if you have a ton of these things, much quicker to do it that way. And then on the X axis, we want to show well, whatever it is that we want to aggregate. So in this case, let's start by the count. That's great. And then we want to just make sure that we omit zero values for uh, an easier visualization. And now we see we get the same result that we have here for our brackets, but with just two clicks, uh, much, much easier. Now, the drawback of this method is that per visual uh, you know, pivot table, we can only have one value. It's not possible to do several values at once uh, currently in Notion. They will update the chart functionality in the future. So then uh, that would be possible. But for now, we're sort of like uh, stuck with one. So we would need to you know, call this um, total sales. And then we would need to create a new uh, view. So we would need to duplicate this and call this revenue. And here, instead of you know showing the count, we can then show the purchase price, the sum. And you see we have also our other aggregation options um, to show different values. But here we have again then the uh, way to see, okay, in Germany, we made $214 worth of sales. Much, much quicker uh, method. But again, really depends uh, on your specific use case, whether you'd want to opt for this one and uh, this one. Other one I'm about to show you. And method number three, 
creating pivot tables in Notion using rows. This is by far the most robust and advanced method. So if you need a proper pivot table with a ton of functionality, this is what I would recommend you go for. In this case, we can't do it natively in Notion. We need a third party tool. And this tool is called Rose. Rose is a modern spreadsheet tool and they have a ton of cool features. But one of the main things that we want to utilize here is that they have an integration with Notion that allows us to take our data from a database in Notion and sync it to a spreadsheet in Rows. And then in Rows, we can manipulate that in any way that we could usually manipulate it in a spreadsheet, most notably create a pivot table, and then re-embed that pivot table into Notion. And the end result is that we have uh, something in Notion that feeds off our Notion data. And whenever we change something in our Notion data, it will automatically update. So once you set it up, it will feel as if it's a native Notion function and you don't need to navigate several tools at once. So let's have a look at how this works. First, you need, of course, to sign up to Rose, link in the description, but you can use the free account so you don't have to pay any extra to make this work. Then uh, you want to make sure that you can import your data to Rose. In order to do that, we will uh, select uh, go in Rose, uh, create a new spreadsheet, and then uh, select this import data option uh, Notion. Now, we want to import a Notion database. And if this is the first time that you use Rose with Notion, you will have to set up a workspace connection. So in this case, you just go here, you go through uh, the setup steps, and then you select uh, through that the database that you want to connect. I already have rows connected. So in my case, I can simply go over here to Notion and then go on the three dots, search for my connect to and connect it here to uh, rows in order to give it access to my database. Back in rows, I can now go on this drop down and I can select my sales for rows uh, database. And then I can just create data table. This will now query my database in Notion and add all the values here to this um, spreadsheet. Now, of course, I don't really need uh, everything in here. So what I can do is I can uh, edit this, right? So I can go on columns and layouts and I can make sure that we only show the things that we care about. So I don't care about the Notion URL, so I can remove that. Uh, and the pivot table uh, in Notion, that relation I also don't care about. I just want purchase price, product name, and we have just reorder this quickly. Um, perfect. All right, so this is the layout that we want. Now what we can do is we can simply select uh, all of this and we can say, well, insert a pivot table. And as easy as that, we have our pivot table down here. Uh, let me move myself uh, over here so you can probably see it. And now we can say, okay, what do we want to see on the rows? On the rows, we want to see the, the bias country. And in my uh, for my column, for my first one, I want to see the, the purchase price. Um, oops, sorry, actually not uh, the column. Uh, let's remove this. Uh, in my values, I want to see the purchase price. Um, and uh, I also want to see uh, the, 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 the individual um, purchases. So for that, we just go uh, product name. We count on for purchase price instead of count all. We want to uh, use the um, blah, blah, blah. Let's <laughs> myself again so we can probably see it. Uh, we want to have the uh, sum option. All right. So we see uh, with just a few clicks, we created a traditional pivot table. We can, of course, rename these fields, right? So um, let's call this uh, total revenue. And let's call this uh, here uh, total sales. And we're ready to now re-embed our pivot table into Notion. For that, we uh, want to just click here on the three dots and say, please embed. Uh, this will first tell us that we need to uh, share our um, uh, chart. And once it's the case, we can now uh, copy the URL. You have two options, your code or URL. For Notion, we only need the code. So let's click on that, head back to Notion. And then where we want to show our pivot uh, chart, we'll just paste that and use the uh, embed option. And then we'll load uh, our pivot table uh, from rows. Uh, and we can, of course, like resize it if we have to. But other than that, it's there with the live updating data. To demonstrate how the updating works, let's just take a few of these, uh, you know, uh, US sales and relabel them. Because actually, we realized they didn't come from the US. They came from Canada. Perfect. Now, uh, for now, nothing changes. But if we go back to uh, rows, we can uh, just quickly um, refresh our data source here by clicking on the uh, three dots and say refresh data table. That will pull in uh, the new values. And then uh, our chart here will have updated with uh, the calendar values as well. You, of course, don't have to do it manually. This is just uh, to trigger it actively. Other than that, what you can do is you can go on this main integration and you can go uh, on the data table and you can uh, use this automation uh, function to automatically refresh this. So let's click on here. Uh, and say, okay, when do we want to refresh this? Uh, we want to refresh this every day at 8 a.m. and we will replace the content, right? So our current updates uh, rows will get replaced with whatever data we have in Notion. On the free plan in rows, you can update your chart for free once a day 
if you need a higher frequency, right? So let's say you want to update this uh, every few minutes, then you need to go on a paid plan and then you can, you know, set schedule uh, the data refresh much more frequently. Last but not least, uh, one cool advantage of this being a spreadsheet is, of course, that you can do calculations much more easily before you then, you know, output uh, a pivot chart or a regular chart. Uh, so, for example, right, if you said, okay, this is my final price, but I need to now calculate the VAT for these countries, you could do so easily by adding formula property, maybe even with the VLOOKUP, right, you have a separate database where for every country you have the VAT, and then you do a VLOOKUP to check, okay, what is the uh, VAT here, and then get the actual net prices for them. Just one example to leverage, you know, this uh, additional expanded functionality that you get by combining a spreadsheet with Notion. Now you know how to create a pivot table in Notion. It's a super useful tool to have in your toolkit, but it gets even better if you can combine it with effective Notion charts. To help you get started, I recorded a video that goes over every single chart type in Notion. Not just regular pie bar and line charts, but also more advanced use cases like burn down charts, flow charts, or Gantt charts. To learn more, just click here and I'll see you in a second.